My name is Rita Pemberton, and I am here to talk about the silk cotton tree and its significance to the history of Tobago. The silk cotton tree is a naturally occurring tree in the Americas, and there are several trees in Tobago, but there are two that assume the particular his importance in the island's history. One is located at Culloden, and the other is located on the north side road, Runnymede. The one at Culloden assumed its importance, particularly because of its association with a formerly enslaved woman by the name of Gangang Gang Sarah. But before I mention about the Gangang Gang Sarah story, I just want to indicate that the silk cotton trees were important to the social, religious, and economic life of the First Peoples as well as the enslaved population. The First Peoples used the silk cotton tree to create their canoes, their dugout canoes, and they also believed that their ancestors occupied the trees, so it played an important part of their religion and culture. Similarly, the enslaved population believed that their ancestors occupied trees in the forest and in Tobago. It was a silk cotton tree because of its size and the ancestors were always present and willing to assist the, those who were on the other side of the earth. So their religious practices also engaged the silk cotton tree. The Gangang Sera story is that Gangang Sera was an enslaved woman who was sent from West Africa to take care of the enslaved Africans on the island of Tobago. When emancipation came, Gangang Sera, oral tradition has it, had finished her work and therefore she sought to return to Africa. To do this, she climbed to the top of a silk cotton tree, attempted to fly, and fell to her death. So this is why, this is why the tree in Cologne is so celebrated. Now on the 2nd of December, 2020, just afternoon, the tree crashed to the earth. And this occurred after about two weeks of groans being heard coming from the tree. Its fall was associated with a spate of heavy rainfall in the area and that the belief that the roots had become waterlogged. It caused great consternation on the island because this was a cultural icon and it was also a tourist attraction on the island. The question is, what was to be done once the tree had been removed? The other tree stands on the north side road with its roots crawling across the roadway. Previous attempts to cut the tree resulted in workmen absolutely refusing. Now the question is, what would become of that tree? Now, there is a tendency to treat the Gangang Sera story as uh, a myth, um, something out of somebody's imagination, but it is well grounded in the oral tradition of the Bible. And what ought to be done is to examine the messages that are carried. Now, oral history out of the African tradition is filled with messages, sometimes very clear and in other instances coded. So when we look at the Gangang Gang Sera story, we try to extract the message. The first is that salt consumption is what 
caused or what is believed to have caused Ganga's serious demise. And therefore, for us, we must look at salt com consumption. There was heavy salt consumption during the period of enslavement and the diets of the enslaved population. Everything was salt, salt, meat, salt, something, salt or the other. And therefore, as a consequence, there is a high incidence of hypertension and diabetes in the descendants of the enslaved population in all slave societies, most certainly in Tobago. And it is a phenomenon that is not found in the African populations who remained in Africa. And that is lesson one. We must look at our health. Two, she was a caretaker. And caretakers provide all kinds of assistance associated with medicinal and herbal and curative. And therefore, we should look at the herbs and so on that are present on the island that have been preserved and the knowledge about their use and have recourse to them. Because one of the things that happened during enslavement is that they were dismissed by people who continue to research them. And in some instances, provided um, traditional Western type medicine pills and tablets and so forth to be sold back to the people when the original source is growing in somebody's backyard. Secondly, she wanted to go back. The return is a feature of enslavement. People sought to escape from enslavement and there are several instances of revolts and resistance movements of all kinds in Tobago, resistance with direct confrontational ones occurring across the period of enslavement. Um, Non-confrontational was also practiced to a great extent. So we must not lose the messages that were sent. And so the Gangang Sarah's story should not be relegated merely to a tourist attraction to the silk cotton tree or and, and other silk cotton trees. What we have to remember about them certainly is the fact that on many plantations, they were used to hang slaves. So the belief that the ancestors lived there is closely associated with the fact that they were used as agents of punishment whilst at the same time being regarded as the agency of liberation. So I thank you very much for listening.